If there are flavors in your cup, something about your brew, or something about the grinder that makes you wonder if it's working to the best of its capabilities, follow along. I'll help you take apart the grinder and inspect the pieces. The first step will be to unplug it from the wall. And then we'll rotate the hopper counterclockwise until it stops and lift it off. Lift out the gasket and then the ring bird. We'll start here. It has two tabs on the top, one of which is red. These are what you use to take this part in and out of the grinder. There should also be three additional tabs around the perimeter of the burr holder. These three tabs are critical to grind adjustment and consistency. So if any of them are broken, cracked, missing, then you definitely want to change your burr holder. The burr holder is actually designed to be the weak link of the adjustment system. So if something like a rock fragment or unroasted bean, which we actually have a collection of uh, that we found from grinders that came into our service department, if something like this passes through the grinder, we want this burr holder to be the part that takes the brunt of the hit, not your drive gear, the motor, or the burrs, which are a lot more expensive and difficult to replace. If all of that looks good, then your ring burr should be in good shape. However, a worn ring burr is something that's pretty tricky to diagnose. A sign of it can be really slow grinding, and we have a whole article on the troubleshooting section of our website to help you better understand if it might be time to change your burrs. So let's set that to the side and turn our attention to the paddle wheel. So the paddle wheel pushes ground coffee around and out into your bin. And you can see it in here, these four white plastic spokes coming out from underneath the cone burr are the paddle wheel. If your paddle wheel is not in there, like this, ground coffee will not get pushed into your bin. And not only will you have a grind quality issue, but you won't be able to grind coffee at all. The paddle wheel is also uh, pretty easy to change. We have some guides for that on our website. So we've checked the ring burr, we've checked the paddle wheel. Now let's make sure that the ring burr is being pulled into the threads of the adjustment ring and that your grind size is adjusting the way it should. What we'll do for that is install the ring burr. The red tab needs to go near the front right near the setting 30. It doesn't click or snap into place, but it does settle into the grinder when you have it in the right spot. And then around the ring burr, we'll look for this black plastic that has two blocks on it, one near the front and one near the back. This is the adjustment ring. And we'll know if we found the adjustment ring by using the block in the back as leverage and rotating it clockwise. It should make a clicking noise. Go maybe five or 10 clicks clockwise and your ring burr should be held down into the grinder. In fact, you should see as you rotate it clockwise the three white perimeter tabs of the ring burr being covered by the black threads of the adjustment ring. This is how the grinder adjusts the grind size, how it pulls the ring burr down against the cone burr. Your red tab needs to be near the front right, near setting 30. If you have your ring burr in backwards, it takes like 20 clicks for it to start threading the ring burr down, and that shows up as not being able to get a fine enough grind, or maybe your hopper turning by itself also. So we want to rotate that adjustment ring all the way counterclockwise when we're done with this test. The adjustment ring must be counterclockwise for your hopper to install. We can go ahead and put the gasket back on the top. Put the hopper back in, go back to our grind setting, plug it into the wall, and we're ready to get back to grinding and hopefully enjoying some great coffee. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to support at barazza.com. I'm Pierce Jensen, thanks for watching.